in 1534, Master Fitzherbert warned about the dangers of ostentatious dress. 500 years on and today, board gamers are still discussing, should it be banned? In this video, we're going to take a look at historical farming books and compare them with the 17th century theme of the board game Agricola. Welcome to Unfussy Board Games, I'm Terry O'Neill and Agricola Revised Edition is my favourite strategy board game and it now has about 500 cards and each card has unique artwork and a unique theme and its own bit of strategy that it brings to the game. In this video, I get the help of an agricultural historian we look at 17th century farming manuals and compare them to the theme in the cards. Now, if that sounds intriguing to you, uh, then hit the subscribe button to see more content like this from the channel. So, so this... Are we yeah, now? Are we, are we yeah should, we, should we just start? Look, so you have experience and an interest this is your field agricultural history yes yeah, so i'm essentially a, um, an, a, an economic and social historian with interests in particular in agriculture and rural history have you um heard of the game agricola before we were discussing it no i haven't uh, <laughs> i don't play a lot of games unfortunately but um no i haven't but i'm very interested to to, to hear about it this book is was originally written in 1534. Yes, that's that's right. Um, so uh, as an as an agricultural and rural historian, I found uh, numerous Agricola cards uh, of interest. Um, oh, really? And, Good. <laughs> and several of the cards relate to arable husbandry mm -hmm. and the tools and equipment of husbandmen. Um, and they show different types of tools. I've got, uh, I counted at least 10 different types of plough uh, included in the game so far and um, yeah and so clearly clouds were the plows were important in the uh, for farming in the 17th century yeah that's right so several several cards uh, relate to arable husbandry um, and depict the tools and equipment of husbandmen and they show different types of plows uh, during, generally speaking during the 17th century in England and Wales there were four types of plows the double wheeled plough, the single wheeled plough and foot ploughs, the plain plough without wheels or, or, or foot, and the Dutch or Dutch plain ploughs. And most of these implements would have been made by husbandmen themselves. And contemporary publications such as uh, Walter Blythe's The English Improver Improved, or, or the example that you've uh, provided on the screen, uh, include descriptions um, and illustrations of the different types of, of ploughs. Yeah, so this this illustration is actually from yeah a different book from as the other material, and this one is is from the seventeenth century. This publication, isn't it? Yes, so that's the illustration from Walter Bly's English Improver Improved, published in sixteen fifty three, and it shows very nicely the different types of ploughs and their and their design. Yeah, and it really does like match quite well with the artwork from the game. I'm really quite pleased with that. Yeah, so, you know, in the 17th century, farmers would have used a wide range of hand tools for cultivating, harvesting, uh, and also barn and yard work. And the different types of tools and farm imp imp implements are often listed in um, the wills and inventories of 17th century husbandmen. Um, and, and, and so these, these are really quite nice in showing, uh, for instance, forks, uh, pikes, uh, uh, gripes, shovels, spades, um, and and often these tools uh, and implements can be found. Uh, the names for them can be found in, in in dialect dictionaries, as as what as their names often varied uh, geographically. The, the the use of artificial fertilizers is is associated with the development of agricultural chemistry in the nineteenth and twentieth centuries. Nineteenth and twentieth, okay. Yeah. However, in the 17th century, natural fertilizers were often applied. Um, 
you know, fields were improved by liming and sanding and marling and also the application of seaweed in coastal areas. Uh, so for instance, in Devon and Cornwall in England and Pembrokeshire in Wales, seaweed might be applied to, to soils. You don't know the game, Agricola, but interesting here, the calcium fertilizers, it talks about in the game, you have to go to the quarry. And then if you do that, then your fields are more fruitful as a result of that, presumably because you're coming back with calcium fertilizers, but um, so which is a nice thematic touch, I thought. There is lots of uh, occupations and you called it, uh, you mentioned by employment, that's BY employment, right? Yeah, where, that's right. Yeah, so, so where people were doing different jobs. Um, yes, I think we need to, when you, when you talk about um, the, the 17th century, you know, you know um, often people would have had multiple occupations. No. Okay, great. Well, that's good to hear. Um, that thematically matches with what we're doing in the game. There's a lot of stuff in the Agricola game about wood and um, yeah, forests and so on. You know, forestry was uh, a really important part of um, the economy as woodland provided resource, you know, important resources. Um, often animals would have been pastured in areas of woodland and, and forest. Um, and obviously, timber and wood would have been felled and used uh, both for, for buildings um, and, and, uh, for, and, and for fuel. Um, so I'm not, I'm not surprised that forestry features very prominently um, in the game. Mm. And again, and again the, the publication you're drawing on here is a contemporary manual, uh, husbandry manual, yeah. you know, and, 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 and forestry was seen as part of, of, of that um, that, that area if you like. The person writing this book he's called Reverend is that right and so there's kind of Christian kind of a biblical background to some of the writing? <clears throat> I think you may be referring to the person who prepared the uh, the 19th century edition rather than... Oh this um, you're not familiar with the game of curricula but what I thought would be fun for me was to try and um, look at the occupations that were proposed here and see if I could find them in the game. And uh, um, so here's the success that I had. Um, here, it was fun to see, you know, working in the garden, um, there it's in the game, garden designer. Um, occupations for a wife, um, sweeping the house. So I found a picture of, uh, well, the stables and I have a winnowing fan there. Uh, that's mentioned in the, the 16th century book. Um, it also talks about women keeping accounts. Uh, so the game actually missed a trick there when it put uh, a bloke as the account manager. It would have been uh, perhaps better thematically to have uh, the woman doing that. Yes, yeah, so, you know, um, women's work was incredibly important. Um, uh, whether that was, you know, in domestic, you know, in terms of the household or, or indeed uh, farm agricultural work, uh, you know, um, in the harvest or, um, you know, sort of, Pastoring of animals or whatever. Yeah. Okay. In this book in the 16th century, there is this section a lot about prayer and um, there is this stuff about commandments and how how can you please God? So Christianity sort of has has a part to play in this book, apparently. So. Well, yeah, we're, we're dealing with a period when religion was, you know, extremely important. Um, and so I'm, you know, there was there was nonconformity, um, but um, you know, uh, religion was in many respects the sort of uh, the backbone of the of, of local communities. Yeah, and um, do you, looking at these um, agricultural cards um, in the game Agricola, has it piqued your interest? Do you think this is something you might ever be interested in playing a game of? Yes, I think so. I've um, I've really enjoyed looking at the cards, and um, in our discussion, I think sort of highlighting um, uh, the sort of uh, where the parallels are between sort of our my historical understanding of the period, and um, and the and what the cards illustrate. Well, thank you to James for contributing to this video, and thank you for watching. Would you like to see more videos like this one? Then hit the subscribe button or you can support the channel by liking the video, commenting or sharing. 
Thank you for all your support and I'll see you in the next one.